We begin today's program up on Capitol Hill. We're pleased to be joined by Congressman Bob Goodlot, Republican of Virginia, who's got a balanced budget amendment that's expected to reach the House floor later this week. And tell our viewers, first of all, how this would work. There are a lot of different versions of the balanced budget amendment. Yours is a, is a pretty clean one and a pretty straightforward one. Yes, uh, mine is, uh, with a couple of minor tweaks, is identical to the 1995 version that passed the House with 300 votes, including 72 Democrats, and failed in the Senate by one vote. And uh, it's very bipartisan. Uh, we've been working with a lot of Democrats across the aisle, and dozens of them will vote for it. The question is, uh, can we get the 50 or so that we need to get to 290 votes for a balanced budget amendment? First time it's been voted on in the House in 16 years. Uh, to that point, Congressman, I was just going to ask you about that. I uh, just read that, that Steny Hoyer is, is actually telling members or encouraging his members on the Democratic side to vote against this. What do you think you're, what expectation do you have about being able to get those 50 Democrats? Well, I've been talking to uh, the minority whip, uh, Mr. Hoyer, about this all year long. Uh, he said that uh, he's concerned that uh, because the balanced budget amendment requires a supermajority not to balance, in other words, in years when there is a, uh, a need to not have a balanced budget, uh, like a national emergency of some kind, he worries that he won't get the, the bipartisanship he needs. But now he is whipping against what is clearly a, a very bipartisan bill. Polls show that 80 percent of Americans support this, including 74 percent of Democrats in one poll taken uh, in June of this year. So really this is an issue more than any other issue in the Congress where members deal directly with their constituents. The Republican conference was given the choice of uh, different alternatives, including two different ones that I have. They chose the one that has the best chance of passing, and uh, that's the message we have for our Democratic colleagues. This is an opportunity for real bipartisanship and to really connect directly with your constituents and uh, all the other forces that are in play here, including uh, the wishes of, of uh, members whipping in their leadership, can be ignored because constituents understand this issue better than any other. They have to live with it themselves. Their state legislatures right. have a balanced budget requirement, and that's why uh, we think a lot of Democrats will join us on this vote. Now, Congressman, as you know, a lot of folks don't know, though, that part of the budget deal that was reached earlier this year on the debt limit would allow a way out of the draconian cuts, the sequestration cuts that we're all expecting, or if the super committee isn't able to come up with it, if, this, if the balanced budget amendment actually passes the House and the Senate. But I want to get your sense of, of the likelihood right now of a super committee coming through with something, talking of talk of taxes being on the table, even from Republicans. Are you seeing anything in what's emerging from the super committee that you think you could support? Well, we're certainly very interested in what they're doing because we want to reduce this deficit as much as possible. We want to deal with entitlement reform, which is not on the table to any significant extent with the sequestration. And therefore, there's a real opportunity there also to uh, take a major step in reducing the deficit. The Republicans have put uh, a plan on the table. Uh, it's uh, one that I think deserves careful consideration, and I hope that the Democrats uh, on the committee, at least some of them, will respond to it because you have to have seven votes. You've got to have at least one member of the other party uh, vote for any package in order to force the House and the Senate to vote on it. And you're exactly right. If for any reason they do fail, passage of a balanced budget amendment will ease uh, the effect of the sequestration. It doesn't eliminate it, but it does make it uh, less painful if a balanced budget amendment passes. Now, Congressman, do you, feel, do you feel like you're personally going to be bound by the so-called Grover Norquist pledge when it comes to supporting something the Super Committee comes out with? If there's additional revenues in there, if there are any taxes increases, is that something that you need to oppose because of that pledge? Well, first of all, each member of Congress has to look at this in terms of their relationship with their constituents. And uh, any, any plan that's put on the table has to be given careful consideration, not just in terms of what it does right now, but what it will do in the long term. We are facing major increases in taxes uh, in uh, January of 2013, just a little over a year from now. And this is an opportunity to alter that path in a significant way. So you can look at it as a tax increase, but you can also view it as uh, an agreement that avoids major tax increases in the future and instead defines a different pathway that uh, involves lower taxes than you'd have in 2013. So it sounds like you'd be open yeah. to something that has new revenues then. Well, I think all members of Congress ought to give all of these uh, uh, a careful look, and then they have to decide for themselves, does that really mean uh, tax increases or does it mean a different pathway that avoids tax increases in the future? 
Congressman, I want to move to politics for one second. Uh, your state's governor, uh, Republican Bob McDonald, being talked about a lot now in circles as a potential VP nominee. Love to get you to weigh in. You think he's he's a good choice for the eventual for the eventual Republican nominee? Bob McDonald would be a great uh, participant in a Republican ticket going into the elections in 2012. Uh, he's been an outstanding governor. He has great bipartisan support, approval rating uh, approaching 70 percent. Uh, he came in uh, with a limited agenda of dealing with a budget deficit. He turned it into a surplus, and uh, he did it without raising taxes. I think that he gets uh, uh, a lot of approval on uh, uh, many fronts that would make him an attractive part of any Republican ticket. You think he'd help the Republican nominee win the state of Virginia? Oh, very definitely. He could be that deciding factor. Uh, very definitely. I, I also think that uh, we we have a great opportunity to win back Virginia. Last time was uh, the first time in 40 years that uh, Virginia did not go for the Republican candidate. I think the views of the electorate in Virginia about the president and his performance are very different than the expectations they had when he carried the state. And right. so uh, with, with other candidates on the ballot, we are likely to carry Virginia as well. But Bob McDonald would definitely seal the deal. All right, Con uh, Congressman, Congressman uh, Bob Goodlatte, uh, Republican from Virginia, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Rick and Amy.